My name is Gardenia. Six years ago, I was a student in Damascus. Today, I am a member of Syria Civil Defense, also known as the White Helmets. The White Helmets is a volunteer organization made up of community first responders who have pledged to serve their community inside Syria with neutrality, impartiality, and humanity. Gardenia is not my real name, and I'm sorry I can't show you my face today. White Helmets, their friends and families are being targeted daily inside Syria by the Syrian regime. So I wear this helmet for their protection. The story of the White Helmets begins in March 2013, two years into the Syrian uprising. By that time, the Syrian regime was conducting around 50 airstrikes a day against civilian targets in Aleppo with heavy artillery and aerial attacks. And in Dara, Damascus, Damascus countryside, Hama, Homs, and Idlib, they were using barrel bombs to destroy marketplaces, small businesses, hospitals, schools, and residential neighborhoods. This is an example of the kind of damage that a barrel bomb can cause. It is difficult to convey the scale of this terror on the ground, the localized effect of a barrel bomb is as the same as an earthquake, measuring eight on the Richter scale. To give you an idea of what that means, the terrifying earthquakes in Italy in January this year measured around 5.7. So imagine that, 50 times a day. Whole buildings would collapse. The people living and working there would be crushed. And any survivors would be trapped beneath the rubble with no prospect of being rescued. Families, neighbors, and civil society volunteers would rush to help, but without the necessary training and equipment to help those trapped, they were helpless. Hundreds of people were dying each day. In 2013, the Syrian regime gave civilians a choice, leave these areas or be killed. For most of our communities, leaving was not an option, but nor was waiting to be killed. So in northern Aleppo, a group of carpenters, bakers, builders, and taxi drivers choose to take matters into their own hands. After receiving a week of training, from an international NGO and a small equipment pack, they returned to the community and began to conduct rescue operations. Two days later, they saved a family of four from the rubble. This was the beginning of the White Helmets. Four years on, we are now over 3,200 trained community volunteers working in 120 teams across Syria in the areas outside the, the control of the regime. We have saved the lives of 87,500 people. And by this stage... <laughs> Thank you. We have saved the lives of 87,500 people and by this stage of the conflict, have more experience in responding to bomb attacks and air strikes than any other organization in the world. Our teams are trained in a wide range of different skills. They include community warning and preparedness, urban search and rescue and firefighting, emergency medical service, and other technical skills, such as marking and clearing explosive remnants of war. Although our teams are initially set up to provide rescue services, we quickly realized that our existing skills 
together with the equipment and training we received, enabled us to do much more for our communities than just rescue them after an attack. When we weren't pulling people out of the rubble, we could use our skills to provide medical services, educate the community, reconnecting electricity, water, and reopen roads, hospitals, and schools. We use the equipment we received for, for doing many things. We use our fire trucks to distribute drinking water in areas of need. And we, we used our rescue diggers to respond to floods and snowstorms. In some cases, we have even been able to protect infrastructure. For example, when the Syrian regime used incendiary cluster bombs to destroy the harvest in Homs in 2016 to starve the population, we stationed white helmet teams around the fields to put out the fires and protect the crops, which were a vital source of food for the people. In short, the white helmets have become the Swiss army knife for community service delivery in crisis. We have seen how much can be achieved with how little. That, when that, is made, when that investment is made directly into the community for the benefit of the community. The diversity in our backgrounds is critical to our success. And our shared training has it provided us with a common language as well as a flexible toolkit for delivering the needs of the community as they evolve. As a female member of the White Helmets, I have experienced the diversity firsthand. Women have been part of the organization since the beginning, and we too are diverse. In our ranks, we have mothers, teachers, students, accountants, journalists, and many other professions. Although we remain a minority in the organization, our numbers are growing, helped by increasing the recognition and unique and valuable role that a female civil defenders can play in serving their own communities. For example, through community awareness campaigns and providing medical services, we have enabled access to otherwise closed gender and community and cultural groups. We offer a unique conduit for humanitarian needs assessment and engagement far beyond serious civil defense, civil defense remits. At first, women were an anomaly. But over time, we are accepted by the whole communities. We are no longer the hidden victims of the war. We are respected and honored for serving our communities, for saving lives, and for giving hope to those in despair. Where are we now? Our core mission is to save lives and deliver essential services. But the work of the White Helmets has impact far beyond the communities we serve. We established ambulance networks which support local clinics and inter international organizations, including Médecins Sans Frontières, and other NGOs. White Helmets have facilitated the delivery of humanitarian aid and have conducted emergency repairs and ceasefire areas, enabling the return of displaced families. We are the main organization clearing unexploded munitions inside Syria. We provide daily cessation of hostilities to the office of the UN Special Envoy. We document 
chemical weapons, cluster bombs, and other banned weapons, which are reported by Human Rights Watch and others. 165 of our volunteers have been killed, and over 480 have suffered life-changing injuries. Our work has frequently referred to as the most dangerous job in the world. This state in a war that has claimed the lives of 450,000 civilians with over 50% of families displaced. Our greatest contribution has not been to save 87,500 lives, but to give hope where previously there was none. Hope, by its nature, looks forward. We hoped and imagined that the conflict would end sooner, and we would lay down our tools and return to our normal lives. Today, we know that what has happened to our country will not be undone. And for most of our volunteers, there are no homes to return to. Our vision now is that what we have rebuilt in the past four years will play an essential role in the reconstruction, recovery, and the reconciliation of our country. We hope that the teams that are today using their tools to break through the rubble, searching for survivors, will in the future use those same tools to rebuild houses, roads, and local community infrastructure. One day, fighting will end. When that happens, the greatest challenge is not to rebuild roads between communities, but to rebuild trust between them. Trust has been destroyed inside Syria. Trust in the government, who claimed it had a responsibility to protect its civilians. Trust in the desire or ability in the international community to take an action on their behalf. And trust in our fellow Syrians to behave towards one another with humanity. We owe our success to date to the trust placed in us by the desperate communities we serve. This trust has been earned by our actions through the legitimacy and representativeness, through the credibility of our members and the humanitarian values they embody, and through the clear mission of the organization, save lives and serve the community. In the same way, white helmets have brought hope in hopelessness. Our vision is to help restore trust when there is none. Every single one of us has taken an oath to save lives, regardless of political, religious, or sectarian affiliation. We have rescued combatants from all sides, including regime soldiers, Russian soldiers, Hezbollah, opposition fighters, and even ISIS. The devastation of war does not distinguish between its victims. So peace should not distinguish between its beneficiaries. The future needs more white helmets, ordinary people like us, who with the training can volunteer to rebuild the fabric of our society. 
I look around at who these people will be. Most of them were children when this war started. At the time, they used to play soldiers. Today, they play white helmets. Thank you. Thank you.